Right, this is going to be a video talking about the Manchester Major and some of the important narratives for various teams coming into it. Now, fair warning, I will discount this with, uh, work has been beating my ass. How long will the f Ryan Feindo mentality carry me? Cause baby, I'm running out of time. <laughs> so I can't really talk about the level of play or the tactics or any of that. Not that that's ever really been my focus in the first place, but you know, I'm basing this a little bit off of narratives that I've been seeing and hearing down the grapevine through social media and just talking to people not entirely based on my own observations because I just haven't been able to watch all the bots. So so as far as the main storylines, we've got we've got a few people to talk about here, right? BDS is coming in as uh you know, a really strong contender, I from what I've seen and heard, like they just kind of exploded onto the EUL after going international, which is a big commitment. You you do not make a player like Shiko start playing in a secondary language unless you're really confident that it's going to push you over the edge and get you championships, which is a big deal. You know, Shiko's a franchise player of BDS. He's been so good for so long, and he has a single major to his name. Finally, BDS is going international. They're breaking out of a French scene. They're picking up talent from the rest of Europe. We've got Yuzus and Solotov. They look to be good. If this isn't a winner for them, like, you know, unless they're in the finals or the semis, that's no bueno still, you know? What's going on there? Making huge changes away from the Lambs, away from players like Rafal and Renshiro. I think Rafal is a while ago. You get the point. Like, it's a bit... It, BDS is here to win it. Their, their goal is the trophy. Anything less than that is kind of not good enough. FaZe Clan is very much in the same boat. They're they're here to win it, right? Uh, they placed second at SI. It was winnable. The, the hammer was in their hands. They just needed to convert one round, and it didn't happen. We don't want another heartbreak for them. The goal is... The goal for FaZe is... Win it or bust, honestly. Like anything else doesn't matter. That's where that's where phases sights are. G2 is a little bit more interesting because G2, uh, you know, on their day, they can they can outgun anyone. They can be unstoppable, unkillable, clutch everything, win every fight. The problem is that they're inconsistent as all hell. And they they've been getting worse as time has progressed since SI23. You know. They peaked, they, they denied W7M the hammer in SI23, they lost it just outright, they, they just looked like a shadow of themselves for the rest of the year, came into SI24, looked better, but not as good as they could have been, and it, you know, there's just been so many problems with this team, they're so inconsistent, I... they're coming in in phase one instead of phase two, like, they, they snuck in. That's not good enough, right? This is G2. We're looking we're looking at a team that should be establishing dynasty, should be lifting trophies. You clearly have the talent. So like, where's that consistency? Are you going to even make it to the playoffs? Because G2 is so volatile. I don't even know if they can do that if they have a bad day and an upset team like Scars or Bliss or Bleed just really has it out for them that one day. I could see G2 getting eliminated early, and that's not good enough for a team like this, right? So, you know, is, is G2 going to show up? That's that's a good question. Speaking of volatility, Space Station, they, their playstyle is always described as volatile. They're surprisingly consistent with their international results, though, um, which is funny. And for me, like, I'm looking at this team and, you know... I like the players, I like Ashen, I love him not being afraid of having personality, being that brash, skilled, like, youngster that he is, because, you know, let's face it, this is an entertainment industry, he's entertaining. Why do you, why would you hate that? Unless you're stupid and or don't understand the value of heels. Uh, anyways, the next step is, like, making a semis, right? The Space Station has been able to do really well consistently for a while now under this crank station core the next step is semis because they've always been stopped at, at the quarters just barely sneaking into playoffs barely not making playoffs at a 2-3 scoreline in phase two the next step is the semifinals maybe even the grand finals right Th this is where we're at you picked up iconic to do this you you said okay Houghton uh Houghton wasn't it he, he couldn't crank station with the rest of us so we're picking up iconic iconic 
this pickup should be pushing you over the line. That's that's where we're at. Now DZ, DZ's uh DZ is interesting because they're they started real rough. Uh they started real, real rough as far as this uh this NAL stage went, and that's kind of problematic because you re-signed Bolo for an extended uh period of time. How long exactly? We don't know. But you re-signed Bolo. That's a big, big name to have. Like that just one of the biggest names in the space, both both as far as like an influencer's influencer perspective but also a competitive like <laughs> skill player goes you know bolo's a big signing and you you've got him for a long you've got him for the long term what are you doing what are you producing with a player like this and then you additionally you've got nafe you re-signed nafe the import for an extended period of time as well these are big commitments to be making so Obviously, DZ's sights are set on the trophy. They've always been attending these international events. They want another trophy to go with that Charlotte Major. But they've been so inconsistent in the regular season. Will they be able to do that? Will that DZ st style just work internationally? Will it, will it push them over the line? I don't know. And if it doesn't, what does that say about Canadians' IGLing style? Because one thing consistently that we've been hearing is, oh, DZ can consistently pick up the good gunners. Well, if you have the good gunners, how many underperformances can you have or just like weird decisions can you have before you start looking away from the gunners? You know, how many Gavinis have to get dropped before you start turning around and looking inwards? Talon, I'm putting here as a main focus mainly just because uh, Fabian is a huge X factor for this team. If there's ever going to be an APAC team that has like more than just that upset potential that Bliss and Bleed currently do, I would put my money on a team coached by Fabian, regardless of the actual talent level of the individual players, and that's pretty much why they're here. Fabian's a huge X factor for this team and how far they can go, so that that's why they're here. I think you get you get a player like that. He helped them dominate uh, South Korea League pretty well. I mean, they didn't dominate dominate in the regular season, but when they were winning, they were winning pretty good. When they were losing, it was like close OTs from what I saw of the playoff bracket. So you know. And this brings us to the last major team here. Obviously, I saved the best for last. Furia. This is the former W7M team. No players have changed. I mean, it's about extending the dynasty, right? It's about it's about making the era your own, proving that you have more than just a single year of domination in you, and really starting really racking up those trophies to build a resume that can compete pound for pound with that Penta G2 dynasty. That's what Fury is here for. They're expected to win it as well. If they don't win Manchester, that's a major upset for everyone involved, unless maybe it's FaZe. You could, you could make the argument, hey, that's that's an earned victory. That was a bit of a coin toss, yada, yada, yada. That's specifics. But if we're looking at the narrative, Fury not winning this thing, that's a big deal. Fury needs to lift the trophy or it's a failure. And their dynasty could potentially get cut short really quickly because... We only get two majors a year. If you don't win a, a LAN, that means you're not, quote-unquote, dominating the the circuit for half of a year. That's a big deal. That's like, you know, you have to you have to consistently be winning these events, be in the finals, otherwise it's considered a failure and you underperformed. You're no longer a top dog because that's just how slow and how infrequent these international events are for Siege. It's not like Counter-Strike where you can have one, a one-off fluke and then next month you're back to lifting trophies. Losing in Siege really, really damages your, your potential eras, your potential dynasties. So Furia's got to win this one as well. Now, let's talk about some uh, less important narratives, but still things I want to touch on here. You know, you've got Bleed and Bliss. I think the goal for these two teams, these plucky APAC underdogs, it's playoffs. You know, we've seen them get the nice... Un we've, we've seen them get the nice upsets. We've seen them perform really really well and they they're able to capture the hearts and minds of fans the next step is to see them in the playoff bracket and if they don't what is the next step that they have to take to get there you've got julio on bleed coaching them you know they seem good in front of a crowd let's see how they play with that manchester crowd but they have to get to the playoffs first and with bliss how, how many times have we seen them look good, play against Wolves, beat them, or, like, lose in a close fashion, and then they just don't make the next stage? Like, just 
they need to get over the hump. They need to get over the hump and get to the next stage and like prove that hey, maybe APAC does have a, have a little bit of depth here. Maybe maybe we do have some strength in this region because they've been consistently proving hey, we're a competitor. I want more than a competitor. I want someone who's in those playoff brackets and actually giving these top teams a run for their money. Into the Breach and Beast Coast, I'm kind of putting together on this one because uh, they're kind of in the same boat as far as I'm concerned. With ITB, you've got the Kenny squared combo. You've got Kangaroo, Kenny, and Kendrew. Making the major for both these teams, frankly, is already a success. Let me start there. But uh, with ITB... They probably want to make playoffs because it's a majority British team, and this is a this is an event being run in the UK. Like right there, that's already motivation enough. Enough said. But beyond that, I think these guys have already surprised. They didn't eke into the major with a last chance qualifier. They qualified during the regular season. So how far can these guys go? What kind of damage can they do? I think they have some solid upset potential. Just looking at the pieces from. A big picture perspective you've got a pro league champion in kendrew remember he won tokoname back in season 10 so you've got an experienced veteran with that with that championship not only like international experience but that championship experience you've got a solid coach behind you it's just a matter of whether or not the rookies can hold their nerve and whether or not they can perform against this international play against the brazilian style the north american style the apac style let's see what they can do maybe they're good for an upset Maybe they're even good to go to the playoffs. Beast Coast, a lot of that holds true as well. I know a lot of people were pointing out that, hey, maybe Beast Coast attacks are actually a little bit on the on the cutting edge of what's going on. I can't personally vouch for or against that, but I think this team's really interesting. Like I already said, making a major was a dub. The next step is seeing how far these guys can go. You, you won the NAL. That's a huge step. First time Beast Coast has ever done that and it couldn't have happened to a more interesting team. You've got Fett. At this point, undeniably, he's one of the best coaches we have in NA. His teams have consistently performed. Like, this guy, this guy's got the sauce. Froshi, great assistant coach to be having on the team. I mean, you look up, you look at the players, and these are solid pieces. You've got Hot and Spirits, Gunner Gav, and Diffuser. Four of those players actually have LAN experience, international experience, even though you look at them and you pretty much say, hey, Spirits and Houghton are like the veterans here. Gunner and Gav have played on LAN and played well. So this is, this is a bit more battle-tested than you might actually expect of a team like Beast Coast when you just look at the names. But once you think about it, you realize, hey, these guys might actually do some damage. So I'm looking at Beast Coast. I think if they make playoffs, that's kind of a dub. That's like, that's already a success. If they have a good phase two, that's like acceptable. If they make it to semis or even the grand finals, like, oh, baby, that's crazy. But it all comes down to hot and cold for me. It, it's about what hot and cold can do on this roster because he's always been this domestic farmer. We know he can just farm people on land or not on land on in NA because we, we've seen it before. We had that NAL MVP stage where he was able to drop them. 3k or more every single round of the match and then he went on land while he was on ssg and he just couldn't even come close to those same like that same impact once it got to international competition this guy's the mega veteran for this team he's the old head he's been he's a year one he needs to remain consistent for these guys otherwise the entire thing is going to crumble in my eyes it's not a matter of like whether or not the other guys have the gun skill or whatever. It's just like if your rock crumbles once you get to the highest stakes, that's a problem. So like will Hunt and crumble? If he does, Beast Coast might be in trouble. If he doesn't, I'm really excited to see where they go. The last two teams uh, I want to talk about because uh, let's face it, I don't care. Nobody cares about CAG or Firax. It's the same story it's always been with them. Hey, they're kind of funny to watch and watch oh geez they went 2 again they're boring they've done this song and dance for literally four years now we can't care about them so the last two teams i want to talk about are team liquid and m80 because they're they're in a similar boat with team liquid they had they've consistently had really rough international events but they even start having really rough domestic events as well and that's where they've kind of been and that's unacceptable because you have you have Nesk and Paulo, two of the most talented Brazilian players that we've seen come out of Brazil, though that's changing in recent years. 
But you look at their trophy cabinet, much like Shaiko, exceedingly underwhelming. Like, these two should have more trophies than they do, and it's due to questionable GMing, and they even started off this stage rough. They turned it around with Tesis. I apologize if that's not how I pronounce your name, dude. I've I've known you since like 2023, 2022 Challenger League. I should know better, but I still don't, so I apologize. Um, but they have Tesis, comes in as this assistant coach. Team Liquid turns it around, whether or not that's all on him or it's just a team effort. They made some hard decisions. I don't know. Not my call to make. That The team knows that's all that matters. And they looked leagues better. They qualify for this event. They qualify for the major. The question for Team Liquid now is, will we get that Team Liquid that qualifies for the major and then disappears and just embarrasses themselves once they make it to LAN? Or are we going to get a revived Team Liquid that can do damage internationally? Because I like that second option. I like when Nesk and Palu do damage and look good against the best teams and players in the world. It's just... I don't know if we're going to break the spell, guys. On a similar topic, we've got M80. This is like a pretty much a practically new team compared to past iterations of M80. Like, you've got a fully international lineup now. You've got Sizen, Spoit, uh, Kino, Leader, uh, was it Leader or Noodle? It's probably Noodle. And Cameraman. So, like, yeah, it, fully international I'm interested to see what, what this team does, but frankly, they have two sets of expectations. They have a personal expectations, which I assume are to make it out of phase two and make the playoffs. But the community expectations of this team are win a fucking match, man. Just just win a fucking match. M80, M80 has underperformed to all hell and back as far as international play is concerned. And while that is a different team than this roster... They're carrying that reputation. That Spectre is still chained to their ankle, so they're going to have to do some work to actually win some matches before that narrative goes away. Otherwise, it becomes the M80 curse, and we'll see where we're at when that happens. But yeah, those are just a handful of narratives, just looking big picture at some of these teams. So uh, let me know what you think is going to happen at this event and uh, how you think things are going to play out.